Everyone. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Kayleigh from Live Volunteer Centre and today I'm jo joined by Anne Short from the Drogheda branch of the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland, um, who was our Drogheda and South Loud winner of the Live Volunteer Leader Awards in 2020. So Anne has joined me this morning as part of a short series of conversations with our winners from 2020 and it's all to celebrate the launch of the 2021 Live Volunteer Leader Awards, which opened for entries on the 30th of September and will be accepting entries until October 19th. So visit volunteerlive.ie forward slash organizations forward slash LVLAs to find out more. And um, so that's out of the way and welcome. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. And um, so we're going to have a chat this morning about yourself and your volunteer leadership. And um, I suppose my first question to you, Anne, is what is volunteer leadership to you? Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Kaylee, um, for me, I, I suppose I never really considered myself a volunteer leader. And it was only in the last while when, when we started discussing it as, as in the, the Loud uh, Leader program um, and, and that sort of thing that I kind of realized, yeah, yeah, I suppose I am a leader, you know, because to me, I, I was just the person that got people to come and do things for us. But, you know, when I think about it, it it's, it's important to have a leader because when you do get uh, volunteers and they get to know you and get to know your organization, you need to know that you're looking after them basically yeah. and you need to keep them informed and they like to know what's going on within your organization. So yeah, being a volunteer leader is important to the sense that, that you're there for them, that they come to you with questions that uh, they know they can come to you and that you're the person they, they want to come to, you know, which is a great thing. It makes you feel good that they respect you for that, you know? So yeah, it, it's, it's an important role, I think. It is. It's a very important role. And look, ourselves in the Volunteer Centre can attest to that. And um, we've had a very, very long relationship with you, Anne, and we know that you just started out as a volunteer yourself. So how did you come to be a volunteer leader within the Alzheimer's Society? Well, in would you believe, Kayleigh, um, my dad had Alzheimer's, so I got involved with the association through my dad's illness, you might say. And, uh, you know, I could see the struggle within the group that they were trying to raise money and they were trying to do different things to kind of keep people comfortable and everything in, in their small facility that we had here in Drogheda. But, you know, I started, I think the first one I did was the mini marathon. And I think um, they came and they said to me, have you any friends? And do you think would some of your friends come and do it with us? So I, I rounded up a busload of friends, would you believe? And I, we went and did the mini marathon and raised a few bob. And then, like, you know, they came back to me next year and said, Anne, you did such a great job last year. Would you consider doing it again this year? And one thing led to another. And I think any events that was being raised or any any events that was taking place, it was like call Annie and like, you know, so I think I just became the fundraiser of the group. Not intent intending to be, but it happened. <laughs> so 23 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's how a lot of people end up um, as volunteers yeah. and volunteer yeah. leaders. Yeah. But, but great that you took on the, the role of leading volunteers and, and you started roping your friends in, but then that became much wider. And, and yes, I mean, you've got an amazing success story there in, you know, with the new building and the amount of fundraising yeah. you've actually done over the years. Um, just tell me what's a typical day like for you and the volunteers in your organization yeah well I suppose if you look at it in today's terms Kaylee, because of COVID and everything uh, we've had to stop most of our outdoor volunteering so for me it's it's trying to come up with ways that we can actually you know do volunteering and do fundraising and for me personally at the moment because of the new building I'm, I'm spending a lot of time down with the team looking at the build and making sure that all the needs are there for our clients and like you know our manager Helen like the two of us work closely together and we kind of know what's needed in the building and we want to make sure everything is there and um, down to colour schemes and everything and um, what's good for dementia people and do you know what I mean and toilet facilities like little things that don't kind of come into play with a lot of us that, many times and just take for granted but these are all important things to us so I mean my volunteer role has kind of changed a little bit in the sense that I'm spending a lot of time down there when I'm not doing that again as I say I'm looking at ways of actually raising funds because funds is a big thing we have to continue raising funds because you know even when we move into our new building now early in the year you know it has to be maintained and we have to fund it so you know the salaries to be raised so it's an ongoing thing for me really but 
you know, I just kind of personally I have to adapt as I'm needed, if you know yeah. what I mean. If that it's makes not sense. Exactly yeah. a typical day that yeah. you, know, you would yeah. have had 18 months ago or probably more yeah. at this stage. Um, so your volunteer leadership, I mean, it, it became your main role. Fundraising was your main role. Um, yeah. When you're say, um, and fundraising is coming back, which is great. You know, we've got some fundraising roles available now. Um, so, and you're starting to see people out and about fundraising yeah. on the streets again. So when your main role is fundraising, how do you actually incorporate volunteer management processes into your work? So now that you're a volunteer leader and, you know, when you're having even just one fundraising day, a lot of you know volunteer leadership comes into that when you've got so many people and how do you how do you deal with that how do you organize volunteers on on a big day like that when you're all out and about fundraising yeah well i i have so many different types of volunteers and and i suppose with our organization kaylee um we're pacific if if that makes sense you know to to uh people with dementia and you know, we like to involve their families as well as much as we can. They like to feel that they're giving back to us. And so, I mean, again, it's it's incorporating their needs as well as ours and making sure that they feel they've done a good job for us and all that. And like, I mean, I have so many different types of volunteers, like we volunteers who would come out to do carol singing for us. And maybe if we have a fundraiser during the year that, that we want to put a little bit of entertainment on, they'll come and they'll sing and they'll play their music. And, you know, it, it, it's just something, it's it's that type of volunteer. And other volunteers will come out in the street and do the bucket collections with us and the flag days and all that sort of thing. You know, we have volunteers that work in the centre that would sit down with clients and, you know, tell stories, hold their hands, that comfort them. There's just so many types of volunteers, I think, and 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 it's great that we have them all because I find it in in our particular field with with dementia, it's it's important that you can kind of adapt to what is needed. So, and I wouldn't particularly go to volunteers who say that collect buckets on the street and money on the street to say to them, "Will you come up and sing?" Because they might feel comfortable, you know. But I suppose that's another side of it too. That when you feel you've got to know your volunteers and you've got to know their strengths that you can kind of coax them into doing something maybe that's not familiar to them. And, you know, and, and then, you know, the group becomes bigger, it gets wider and, you know, we can, we can work with that. And so for me personally, I like to get to know my volunteers. I like to know what they like to do and as, as well. So like, it's, it's kind of widening the family a little bit, if that makes sense to you. Um, that's what it does and I was looking yeah. at you know my next question to you was going to be you know what do you think what do you think the most important qualities of a good volunteer leader are but I think in you know what you've just said to me there you've absolutely demonstrated what good fun you know yeah. what are some of the qualities and that you have them in faith um, you know, <laughs> thank you <laughs> um, you know it's, it's getting to know the volunteers that they're in the right role and um, maybe moving them on to another role when you yes. know they're comfortable in doing so it's making sure that they know you know how much they're needed how important they are and you know how much they're valued within an organization yeah. and it's, you know all of that I suppose is, is one of um, one of the reasons why you won the award last year on and um, no better woman to to get the best out of your volunteers but do you have any other um tips for others I suppose do you what are the challenges that you face um, as a volunteer leader and would you have any tips for people who are trying to have that better connection with volunteers and you know get the best set of their volunteers in their yeah role? yeah it's I tell you I suppose some of the challenges would be to get the right people and and, and it's difficult sometimes because myself I like to include people from all walks of the community you know with their certain times and and I mean I look at people like we have a great rapport with the um, the Order of Malta, for example. And like, I mean, there's times you would say to yourself, like, you know, if, if you're out selling something, those those clients of the Order of Malta, they just love to be involved with you. And I mean, and, and don't be afraid to take them on board. Do you know what I mean? Because like they always come with a, with a, a one of their own um, carers as well, with, who are there to supervise them and make sure they don't get into trouble. And, you know, I, I had great experience one time we were selling tickets for a car. Uh, this is going off the topic, but we had some people from the from the Audra Malta. And, you know, I just enjoyed their company so much that day, you know, and 
they, they would say to me, what do we say to people? Like, you know, and I was saying, just say, would you like to buy a ticket? It's for the Alzheimer's Association. Um, and just when they say yes, and you get them to write the ticket and you say, thank you very much. And, you know, I went off for a break and I left them there alone with their, their carer and they came back and one of them was sitting there with a big smile on her face and saying, like, you know, I did it, I did it. And I said, what did you do? I said, thank you when they bought a ticket for me. And she said, they were so delighted and they told me I was such a lovely person, you know. So, yeah, so, I mean, I suppose you have to look at what your event is, number one, see what needs you have for that event and kind of try and incorporate the right people for it, you know, including people that you don't think all the time would be suitable for it because they surprise you, you know, they really surprise you. Like, I mean, I know you know David, our great friend David, and he yeah. never lets anybody down out there. He's the first to be there to volunteer for all the organizations and stuff. And he's Absolutely. just brilliant. He and is just is. brilliant. Yeah, look, I've had some great experiences volunteering alongside, you know, people from all backgrounds. Um, yeah. That, that inclusivity, you know, is so, so important um, in volunteering. It's it's giving people the opportunity to feel, like you said, like that bit of confidence that that volunteer had, knowing that they'd done what they were told. Yeah. Um, and, and like those, I know you mentioned them all services, but, you know, people, you know, from all walks of life have that sort of, you know, the positive attitude and that confidence is so lovely to see in people when they've been given the opportunity to contribute yeah. so that's that's so lovely to hear and um, so yeah and I suppose as well and um, one thing that's standing out to me there as well in terms of I suppose tips for other volunteer leaders I know you're dealing with fundraising and events mostly but and um, you're saying make sure you have the right type of volunteers and um, a good kind of application process is is very yeah. important in that um, some organizations I suppose would need a more formal process but for yourself it's very much about getting you know to have a chat with the person and getting to know them as you said earlier and what role they'll be able to do and yeah. what role will suit them so yeah, yeah very very because, important. Kaylee those people like if, if they make contact with you and there's a good rapport between you they will keep coming back to you yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, I have volunteers that I've had for years now. And, you know, I'm, I'm just so afraid we have stuff coming up at the moment. And I'm afraid to ring, pick up the phone and ring and say, like, you know, are, do you feel you could volunteer for me now? Because with COVID and everything, it's changed so many people's lives. And, you know, this is the thing. And I'll, I'll be kind of very sad and disappointed if I lose them because it was my way of keeping in touch with them. And like when I meet them on the street, it's like anything going on. Do you need me for anything? And like that's I think that's just such a great relationship to have with somebody. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I, I just I'm just hoping and praying that, you know, our next little venture, which comes along. So I might be on the phone to you yet looking for more. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's it, it, it's great. And, and I mean, they love they love to know because they knew we were building a building and they love to know how's the building going like you know what stage are you at now have you enough money and you know the, it's a it's a conversation for them too to have with you and yeah. like and that's and a very tangible like, thing isn't it you yeah, know yeah having this new building that yeah. all around the years and um, i'm looking at your um the entry that was submitted for you and like 20 plus years you've been fundraising for that building and yeah. all of the volunteers that came and went throughout the, the years can now see that building happening and that's such a tangible thing and um, for volunteers to be able to see yes. I think um, a lot of the times when you're volunteering you don't and especially about volunteering and fundraising you don't necessarily get to see the impact that that has so like I I do volunteer in leadership here for a esophageal cancer fund and that money then goes to the esophageal cancer fund in Dublin so you know it's going to help people with cancer but you never actually get to see that impact yes. but because you're so local and you've had all these local volunteers over the years and now they see this building I think it's wonderful and I definitely do think there's an appetite and um, to get back to volunteering so I know and um, there was a couple of big events and um, around the county last week last weekend um, and I was volunteering at one of them and um, it was amazing amazing to see all of those volunteers that you mentioned um, David being one of them as well but uh, volunteers that would have been out volunteering at events and fundraising yeah. um, all down through the years that we would have seen so much of um, coming out and volunteering again and you know like yourself we would have been worried you know especially people with you know health difficulties mental health difficulties like we don't know what the impact has been um, throughout the lockdowns because we haven't seen them and we don't know what they've been doing and um, but it's great to see them coming back because we know 
look, the many, many benefits of volunteering and having people having the opportunity to come out and give back to the community is so important to them. So um, fingers crossed when you do um, when you do post those roles and we'll, we'll have and, and you know Kayleigh just like yourself like you know I have to say one of my highlights over the last three years was the FLA I just yeah. I just enjoyed the FLA so much as a volunteer do you know and I'm not even as a you know someone on the street enjoying the music it was just as a volunteer doing the different roles I did during that week and I have to say it was just fantastic when I'm talking to people and they're talking about volunteering and I'm saying were you there for the FLA like did you see the FLA like you know but I, I thoroughly personally enjoyed it so much I thought it was fantastic you know yeah it's a great opportunity and actually now that you bring that up and um, I'll, I'll mention that Led Volunteer Centre are part of a pilot program um, nationally one of 10 volunteer centres who are launching um, community volunteers um, so community volunteers would be not quite similar to the FLA I mean not on the scale of the FLA anyway but volunteers that will be trained up um, by ourselves and part of the Loud Community Volunteers team to go out and volunteer at events and become part of that volunteer community that um, volunteer at events, festivals, um, like they'll be volunteering at the Pook Festival, which is coming up shortly, um, if that's what people are watching this before the end of October, of course. Um, but things like urgent community response then as well. Um, and yeah, so... Um, yeah, people who who are registered with us or not registered can sign up for community volunteers. So that's a lovely little club. So that's that's a good one. One. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Thanks good. for bringing that up for me now. <laughs> but that only launched last Tuesday. Um, so that's that's all um, in progress now. Keep an eye on social media and check out eyeballs.ie if anyone's interested in the community volunteers or if anyone's registered with us, they will have uh, probably received some communications with us already about it. Um, but definitely um, worthwhile. Um, when I was doing some um, PR for the um, community volunteers last week, um, that's the example I was using was the FLA. So, um, It'll be volunteers that are trained up kind of cohesively together. They'll have their um their be blue t-shirts this time, not red, and um, but they'll have their community volunteers get up and they will be distinguishedly, you know, the community volunteers, the same way the FLA volunteers were, you know, the friendly yes. and you know had such a brilliant experience. I mean, and um, for anyone that hasn't volunteered yet, definitely give it a try. It's it's great crack. Oh yeah, I'd recommend it, definitely recommend it now. It really is because you feel so good at the end of the day that you've done this, like you know, and you know, it, there's no age involved in it, you know what I mean? So you could be of any age doing something and just get the, the joy of it at the end of the day. So yeah, I spent my day out there and volunteering and it was great. I felt feel great, but you know, and yeah, you're just absolutely. giving a little bit back. So it's it, it really is good, yeah. It is, and it's a lot about you know doing it for yourself as well as doing something for the community. There's so many um, positive um, health benefits, you know, benefits um, for your CV if you're if you're out of work or looking for work, but you haven't worked before if you're a young person. You know, so many benefits, and you know we're delighted now that that you're giving a um, recommendation there to everybody to get out and volunteer. It's it's so valuable for yourself and for the community. And um, so and then moving on. Um, finally to your own volunteer leader award so I just want to um, read a little bit about what was said about you because it's absolutely amazing and um, so the person who nominated you said that um, Anne has been driving the driving force of the Drogheda Alzheimer's organization for 20 plus years it's fair to describe her as, no, as nothing less than a human dynamo totally dedicated to the cause of people suffering from Alzheimer's and supporting their carers her own family was affected by Alzheimer's and so she has first-hand insight into the difficulties it can bring. She's been a tireless campaigner for Alzheimer's sufferers in the Jaha and South Clyde area. Now that is just the first three lines. I, um, it was There was a, a lot and it was a lovely, lovely nomination. Oh, thank you so much. That was lovely. <laughs> Very well deserved. So what has it meant to you or what did it mean to you um, to win an award? And what would you say to somebody who's thinking about nominating a volunteer leader? In but, you know, um... I have to say, I was just totally blown away that day. I was like a big kid. I couldn't stop smiling. <laughs> it was something I wasn't expecting. And, you know, I, I kind of, I would be the one to put other people forward all the time. But, you know, it, it was just so nice and humbling to get an award like that. Uh, you know, I, I've done it for so long, as you say. But, you, you know, you, you don't do these things for awards. Yeah. But it's nice. It is nice to be recognised, I have to admit. And, and I was very humbled by the whole thing. And 
Oh, sure. Look, I, I was going around winning from year to year for a week. <laughs> I saw it on Facebook, all right. And like just to say, for people who are watching might not know, um, you were coaxed down to the Drogheda Borough Council building <laughs> on, the, on the, you know. I was. <laughs> what were you going, you were going into sign forms for the new building or something? I was going into sign, yeah, we had to sign forms, but I was told we had to sign forms for something and I fell for it. <laughs> And uh, yeah, no, it was it was funny, but it was even um, yeah. Oh, look, at my my colleague who, who brought me like he knew all about it, but brought me down like and he was driving around the streets, and I said, "Where are you going?" Like you know, <laughs> and, and I have this thing about my husband's driving; he always drives the long way around everything. And I said, "You're as bad as my husband," you know. And I was there abusing the poor man in the car. I said, "Like where are we going? Why are we to go this way?" And I, I just have to pop in here for a minute. He said, and I said, "All oh, right, okay." And he says to me, oh, she might as well come with me, you know. So I said, right, OK. So I went in and Grony was inside the door. I'm a surprise. <laughs> so, I'm telling you, it was a surprise. Yeah, surprise, yeah. It really got me. <laughs> well, that's but, uh, and look, I wasn't there, obviously, with COVID and everything we had. Yeah. We had quite the celebration that we'd hope to have. But, you know, we hope um, and we saw from the pictures what I saw. I know Grony was there. Um, you know, how delighted you were and how, how much it meant to you as well. Yeah, um, so what would you say to somebody who's thinking about nominating or somebody who's working with a volunteer leader um, about, you know, maybe recommending them to nominate the volunteer leader yeah like like as I said it, it's something you do for the love of it but I mean it, it's nice to recognize somebody's achievements and somebody's good work and you know so yes like I would say yeah go for it like you know nominate somebody that you think deserves it because you know I don't know maybe I'm just being humble but like I mean I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have recognized that I had done all this work. It's just normal to me, to be honest with you. Something I, I like to do, but you know, yeah, it is nice to give back. And I suppose, you know, if you have a, a volunteer leader, leader in your group and you know they've worked hard, yeah, like give them that little bit of a treat. You know, we all need to lift every so often. So I would definitely say yes, you know, show them that you appreciate what they do for you and yeah, and nominate them. Yeah. Really and good. Um, I was going to say this at the end, but we are delighted to announce again this year that um, the lovely Sarah McKenna of Sarah McKenna Ceramics in Bridge Street um, Studios in Dundalk is, is designing and producing our, our award. Um, so we similar to the one last year, which is absolutely fantastic, Anne, wasn't it? Beautiful, yeah. Actually, mine's on the wall. I don't know whether you can see it, but let's see if I can show you. Uh, up oh, yeah, there. there it is. I can see it there. It? Yeah, yeah. The beautiful frame tile um, yeah. for the winners. Um, of, of the awards and look fingers crossed as well it, it will be an in-person event now yeah. um, this year uh, with the restrictions being lifted on the 22nd of October but sure we'll and um, we'll have to wait on and see on that one but um, certainly we will do our best to recognize the, the volunteer leader award uh, the volunteer leaders and um, that have been nominated in any way that we can um, you know restrictions allowing and all of that and I mean even in your own organization Kelly like you know you, you you do such good work for the community and everything I suppose people forget about you like they say oh it's your job but like at the end of the day like you know you all need a little bit of recognition as well because you do fantastic work well thank you and look that's where we are here to support you know everybody in the community and you know anything we can do to promote to promote and support volunteering which is what we're funded to do and um, it look is you know we, we'll, we'll do whatever we can um, and thank you very much for saying that. Um, but we, we do appreciate um, working with fantastic volunteer leaders. It makes our job a lot easier. And um, but look, we're always here to support organisations of any um, of any size and people who are volunteer leaders who you know haven't maybe had the experience. We're always here to help them as well. So um, yeah, thanks a million for that, Anne. Yes, um, we'll wrap it up there. And what I just want to um, give a reminder then about the the Live Volunteer Leader Awards. So we'll be accepting entries until October the 19th. Winners then will be announced um, on International Volunteer Manage Managers Day, which is Friday the 5th of November. And um, there are five categories to choose from um, this year. So that's an extra two on last year. So we'll go, we'll be continuing again with the general category, which is um, three awards, one for Drogheda and South Loud, Mid Loud, and then Dundalk and North Loud. And this year we have an additional COVID-19 award and a special category for um, volunteer leaders who lead young volunteers. And um, so we're delighted to have the extra awards. As I said, um, hopefully we will have an in-person event um, to recognise the nominees and the winners this year. But again, we'll, we'll be confirming details on that later. 
Um, so with, with that all being said, thanks for watching and thanks again, Anne, for, for joining me. Thanks, Gail, and the best of luck to everybody. Yes, exactly.